I uh, did a couple things this week, yesterday and today. Uh, these are obviously the legs, and I put some filler around the outside edge of this one. Uh, this one still needed some on the top, whereas this one has already got a coat on the top. So I did the top and I did um, the sides of this one as well. Obviously I haven't had a chance to sand it yet. The other thing I did was put in the magnets. So there are four magnets. They're uh, 10 millimeter in diameter, five millimeters thick. Four of them hold the horseshoe in place. Two of them hold the booster covers. So here I've got the booster covers with two. There's also, you see this semi-circle here. There's a piece of plastic that goes in there. So when it sticks to those magnets, that semi-circle... Um, keeps the booster in place along with two straight pieces uh, one here and one here which I printed I just haven't glued in yet um, these are the horseshoes these are the mark three horseshoes so this is one piece um, if you have a, a 300 by 300 millimeter print bed you can print the one piece horseshoes from the mark 3 folder even if you're printing the mark 2 droid or mark 2 legs which is what this is this is the three part mark 2 leg and this is the one part mark 3 horseshoe because the leg files are basically the same it's just that the Mark II version was cut to fit on a smaller printer than the Mark III. So I have a big enough printer to print the horseshoe in one piece, but not the whole leg in one piece. So uh, yesterday I glued the magnets into the legs, right? So you got four for the horseshoe and two for the boosters. Um, and then I glued, I also glued the horseshoes and the boosters, and then I came back today and I've done a second, um, coat of epoxy to get it at least as flush or hopefully a little bit more than flush so that next I can sand it, uh, smooth with the finish. And it's not, I'm not doing that. Um, so it will be smooth. I'm doing that so that I'll have more epoxy holding the magnets in place. Um, one thing to note when you're doing this it's a good idea to wear gloves if you're dealing with two-part epoxy so you don't get it on your fingers. And another thing is to get some tool to push the magnets down into the epoxy. Um, so what I did was I put epoxy in the hole and kind of wiped it around to get it on the outside edges of the hole and have enough in the bottom. And then push the magnet in, which gets the gloves all covered in epoxy so you do a couple of them and your gloves covered with epoxy and then maybe use another finger and then I thought well okay that was kind of a dumb idea um, pretty much as dumb as using a screwdriver because if you use a screwdriver then what's going to happen is the magnet's going to stick to the screwdriver so when you pull the screwdriver away <clears throat> it's going to lift the magnet out of that hole and you really want it bottomed out so you can get 
some epoxy on top just to help hold it in place um, because they are very strong magnets. What I ended up doing is, because behind me is my garage and I've got some tools and things in there, what I used, uh, I just dropped, was a rivet. Uh, this is an aluminum rivet so it doesn't stick to the magnet. Um, it's not the best tool. It was hard to grab and push. So a dowel that's just a smaller diameter would probably be a really good alternative choice. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Or maybe a piece of uh, plastic. Just print something on your 3D printer that's cylindrical shaped that you can use to get some pressure on there because what I noticed was after putting the epoxy in the hole lay the magnet on top push the magnets down you could hear the pops of the bubbles just the air bubbles and the epoxy itself as you push the magnet down the uh, epoxy coming up the sides of the uh, hole in the plastic that uh, that it sits in so you could kind of hear it go pop 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 as you pressed it down so something you can get a good grasp on to push down there so it gets near or touching the bottom I, I pushed down as hard as I could um, when I looked in these holes there were there were um, lines in there. It wasn't like a really smooth finish. And so I figured that that's going to be enough to get a good hold from the epoxy onto the magnet. It's not like it's a really smooth plastic finish that the magnet is touching, is being glued to. It's, it's got a, you know, it's got some layer lines in it. So that should help it have uh, more for the uh, epoxy to adhere to and then again like I said I let it dry for 24 hours and then I came back and I put more epoxy on top of all of the magnets to try and get it basically overfilled like this one here I can it's because it's epoxy is clear it's really hard to see probably but this is like a nice oval over the magnet and then I'll try and sand that down. My worry is because some of them, especially these booster covers, the magnets are really close to being flush when these went in. So what I'm thinking is when I start sanding off the excess epoxy, it, it's, it's probably on these booster covers going to come off of the magnets because the top of the magnets are so smooth and it'll be such a thin coat because there's not much gap between the top of the magnet and the top of the plastic the surface here that it'll probably just come off I, I think it'll it should be fine there should still be enough epoxy around and beneath it to hold the magnets in place um, they're not something that you're gonna be taking on and off all that often um, I'm not even gonna put it together now because these have only been sitting out here a couple hours but they're so strong that I just wanted to make sure I had enough epoxy in there so I don't end up after taking them off a couple times having the magnets pop out of out of the plastic and end up with both magnets just sticking here and having to re-glue them so I should be okay um, for whatever reason it's just the booster covers that they seem to be pretty much flush with the top of the plastic the the horseshoes here horseshoe covers and the top of the leg here um, they were recessed enough that when I sand this smooth so that these covers fit on um, nice and flat and level there should still be 
epoxy over the top of that magnet. So there'll be some underneath, some around the hole, and then some on the top, helping to hold them in place. So just a, just a, just a tip, um, use rubber gloves so you don't get epoxy all over your fingers and get some kind of a cylindrical, non-magnetic something to help you push those magnets down into the epoxy as far as you can and then not something magnetic because then when you pull it off it's going to lift the magnets up because they're really strong so it was the little little uh tip i had for gluing the magnets in place um the filler the two-part filler i'm using again i'm, I'm really used to using the two-part filler on some of my on my other hobby but it is it does take quite a while to sand off as opposed to the glazing putty so now that I've <laughs> done quite a bit with this two-part I think I will be using the glazing putty a little bit more um, but I still like the idea of using this two-part on the legs because the legs are um, they're outbound and they could they could you know get bumps more easily than say the body parts so I think that this two-part epoxy is a bit or two-part uh, filler is a bit sturdier if it gets knocked around it's less likely to chip than the glazing putty which is some pretty soft stuff but yeah, it is, it is kind of a pain to work with. So that's, uh, I think that's all I'm going to have time for this week. Maybe depending on the weather, maybe I can uh, do some of the sanding tomorrow. But I definitely want to let this epoxy that I put on tonight get 24 hours or close to 24 hours before I start sanding it flush with the top surface.